good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, after a long list of uh, brilliant speeches, as Mr. Fuchs said, I'm inclined to say, let's go to business. Um, because uh, if there is no business in green economy, there is no investments, and if there is no investments, uh, there will not be any progress in uh, all these green topics. I have to find the right arrow here. This is it. We're a company who is trying to do business, basically, in a green field. Novalet AG, founded in 2001 as a, as a spin-off of the university in Dresden, um, we are the world leader in energy-saving organic LEDs in technologies and materials for organic LEDs. And I will expand a little bit on the technology later. We did 11 million revenues last year. We have a constant growth of revenues over the last years. We were profitable by the end of last year in Q4 last year, and we will stay profitable over the next year. We have a quite steep um, growth in revenue in front of us, mainly based on what our customers think they will do in the future, uh, and we just follow them. Uh, we're completely venture capital financed, had a third round of financing end of 2009, still money on the bank, and as I said, as we're profitable, um, we think we will need no other financing in the future. 450 patents, by the way, I see the same picture here, so I can still look at you. Um, 450 patents uh, in the field of organic dopant, one of the largest portfolio of uh, patents basically uh, in that field. 100 people, this number is, is a little bit old, it is from the end of last year, currently we're 112, we will be some 125 by the end of this year and still growing. We have our headquarter in Dresden, which means the company is located there. Um, we have an office in Japan and Tokyo, where I just uh, spent some weeks, two weeks ago. And um, we will be opening an office in Korea and Seoul within the next two to three months. A little bit uh, about the development of Lovalet. That's what I just said, uh, quite steep increase in revenue. In 2009, we were a little bit cautious uh, how the, the financial crisis may hit our customers and by that may hit our company. It did not happen. We still grew and uh, we're on track uh, for the future now. Um, as I said before, we are on the technological forefront, let's say, of the organic electronics, of the organic LEDs. This is a list of world records, which you just have to believe. Uh, they are proven, let's say, and they show that we are really uh, uh, in front of the, of the competition here. Again, i tell you more about the technology in a few seconds. This slide shows the three members of the management board, and if I see all these three years international exposure and 20 years international management, it basically says that these three guys are responsible for the fact that the average age of our stuff is not 35, but 37. Um, I skip that, I, skip, I don't skip that. Um, very important for a small company like us, we are supplying to the big players in the display industry, to the big players in the lighting industry, and they want to be able to rely on a company like Novalet. And they want to be sure that our success is not only something which is a lucky story, but is the result of processes, the result of, of uh, a method which, which can easily be duplicated. They want to be sure that we can supply material to them so that they can build their millions of, of devices on that. So therefore, we joined this European Foundation for Quality Management, uh, and I can only encourage every, especially small company, to do that because it really forces you to put processes in place which, again, allow you to, to, to grow the company systematically. I skip that, I skip that, I skip that, but I don't skip that. This is basically the core of what we do. You may have heard about OLED, you may have heard about AM OLED screens in mobile phones and other things. What is an OLED? An OLED is a piece of glass. You put some organic material on it in a vapor deposition 
process, you put another piece of glass on it, and then you apply current and it emits light. And by that is the only existing light source, source that emits light on a surface. Everything else is just a punctual light source or a strip or something else. OLEDs emit light on a surface. And this surface can be like this, or it can be like this, or it can be like this. And what we do in this concept is the following. As I told you, here is a piece of glass. You have another piece of glass here. And in the middle, you have transport layers and emitting layers. Electrons and holes are going through the transport layers. They meet in the emitting layer, and by that, it emits light. And we are concentrated, basically, technically-wise, on the doping of these transport layers to make OLEDs very efficient. That was for the technology. Um, we're completely fabulous. We're not producing anything. We are developing technology. We are developing material. We license our technology to the big players in the display industry and in the lighting industry. But we don't produce material. This material is produced for us by BASF, former SIBA, uh, now BASF, and from there shipped to us, quality controlled by us, and then shipped to our customer. That's very important because one of the main points in venture capital finance companies is they should not be too capital intensive. Um, for what do you need or use basically OLEDs? You can use it um, for... Ah, that's very nice. <laughs> I still have seven minutes. Um, you can use them for display and for lighting. Display is quite simple. Um, the industry is quite simple. Let's say you have currently the LCD panel makers, and these LCD panel makers, mainly in Korea and, and, and the rest of Asia, will be the main players in the lighting industry in the future. And the advantage of an OLED display is quite simple. The OLED, one pixel is one OLED, and the medium, basically, which makes the light, also makes the picture. This is different in an LCD. In an LCD, you have a light source, and on top of that, you have the liquid crystal, and the light source makes the light, and the liquid crystal makes the picture, and therefore, the structure is like this, and the basic structure of an OLED Sony uh, did a TV already two or three years ago, which was 1.5 millimeters thick. So, therefore, we say OLED is an attractive LCD, basically attractive for customers, because it will be a better flat panel display, maybe even flexible for producers, it is attractive because they can keep the LCD momentum. Basically, they take a Gen 5, 4.5 or whatever LCD factory, they throw out half of the equipment, put in a little bit of new equipment, and then you have a production line, basically, for OLED flat panel disc displays. So, in the display industry, the wave is paved for OLEDs. Um, we have the first uh, smartphones on the market, um, with OLED displays, and we will see a lot more in the near future, also going to bigger sizes in TVs and other display uh, devices. It's a little bit different in the lighting industry, um, just some applications which you can imagine. Um, I think the most remarkable is this. Uh, you can imagine that in the future you just are able to put an OLED on any surface, and by that, um, giving the opportunity to give light. My favorite example still is the window, which you coat with an OLED. Um, at the daytime, when the window, the OLED, is not switched on, the light is coming from the outside into the room, and at the nighttime, you just switch on the window, and the light is still coming from there. It's a green product. Why? Because the power consumption is very low and the potential is uh, very high that it will be much lower in the future. And it is, and uh, that has to be mentioned uh, more and more often, it is mercury-free, completely different from our energy-saving bulbs, which in the future will give us a huge environmental problem in terms of waste we have there. And 
more remarkably for the industry, it will be a very significant, significant modification of the value chain um, in the lighting industry. And I come to that now. Um, so if you talk about the lighting industry, you basically say there are three big players, Osram, Philips and General Electrics, dominating the lighting market. This is partially true. We have the three players here, they have a 60% market share of this. But this is not the lighting market. This is the lamp market, the market of the light source. The bulb, the phosphorescent tube, or whatever you may think of. The real lighting market is much more. And it also consists of some 60 to 70 percent of what we call luminaire, which is basically all these fixtures, aluminium, reflectors, and everything you normally have around the light source. This is some, some 60 to 70 percent of the lighting market. In Europe, by the way, compared to the three companies playing here, in Europe you have around 5,000 companies in this luminaire field. And if you now think of a very, very simple OLED lighting device, you just take four OLED panels, you glue them together in such a structure, and you have a lighting device which basically consists only of the light source. There is no fixture, there is one cable, maybe a little bit of glue, um, but that's it. And the big question now is, if you look at this product, who will do the business? Are this the Luminaire companies, or will this be uh, the big three companies who are currently dominating the light source market? I don't have the answer for that. I only know that we, on one hand, do business with these people, but on the other hand, we have a lot of interest from the Luminaire companies who are seeking basically their business. Because, frankly speaking, if your business is producing um, aluminium reflectors for fluorescent tubes, and you have to worry about the questions, will there be any fluorescent tubes? tubes in 20 years, you start thinking about where your market share in the OLED business in 20 years is. Again, I don't know how it will be, but my guess is, or what I currently see, what we currently see is these players moving a bit slow. Um, on the other hand, some small players moving very fast here. On the other hand, we should never underestimate if this big tankers have started to move maybe in five years, they just have a lot of power and may uh, then conquer the market. But again, it's a very interesting uh, move currently, also fueled by another factor, which is the ordinary light source here was basically a 50 cent or one euro thing. And if you buy a, if you, if you produce a luminaire, a lamp for 200 euros, you don't have a problem to pay let's say 50 cent or one euro uh, to Osram Phillips or GE. The light source in the OLED age will be more like a five to 10 euro thing. And if you build luminaires uh, with a market price of let's say 100 or 150 euros, you start thinking about the question, do I want to give this part of the value chain here or may I want to have some bigger part of the value chain there? <laughs>